the public of New Zealand. I'm fair sure we'll be happy that John Adshed has included some of the expatriate players who are playing in Australia. preliminaries almost at an end there's the Australian side a Mulva through to Ola and Shaw the one change as I said in the number three shirt Van Egmond coming in in place of Wally Savoy and wearing the three shirt in Australia uh, Davidson wore the three short shirt and Savoy the two we'll just have to wait and see uh, which fullback position they occupy now the all-white side, there's no resemblance to that in Australia. Redenton coming in to play at right back. Uh, rookie Herbert, it'll uh, be interesting to see whether he poses a sweeper or in midfield. We don't know that yet. And also it'll be interesting to see whether McLennan and uh, Wright, which one of those two plays on the right flank. Ironside stiffening the midfield. De Jong, the striker playing in Australia at the moment, doing very well, back in the attack. And last of all there, Tommy Mason uh, at left back. Perhaps today we'll see Mason making one or two uh, forward runs up the flank with three defenders in the middle. That remains to be seen. And John Adshed's kept that a close seat. But here's the referee from Singapore, Mr. Bin Singer. And the fourth official there is Gary Fleet of New Zealand, just left the field, just about ready to go. Well, New Zealand will have the advantage of Come on, 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 come on,
Stay out, stay out. Push in, Ollie. Stay. 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 As you will now be aware, we are having uh, some problem with our commentary feed from the Mount Smart Stadium. You'll be getting, uh, of course, the natural effects from the ground, but uh, at the moment, just having trouble with uh, Alan Richards and uh, Adrian Elric's commentaries. So New Zealand with and, a goal uh, we'll kick be endeavouring to uh, join them the very shortly. Slight problem we had. In fact, we do have that commentary feedback now. Let's go back. Now, Clint Gossing has a goal kick here for New Zealand. Well over halfway with the breeze in behind it. Now Dunford for McLennan to chase. Strong chase by Darren McLennan. Nicely worked back there by Gary Van Edmund. A new player here in the Australian side coming forward at right back. The long ball cut out by Gary Lund. Gary Lund with a responsible job of taking over here from Kerry Evans in that central defence. Now down on the flank. Yes, the ball worked away there from Oller and Shaw by Tommy Mason. Australia with his throw. Paul Wade. The right winger. And a lead. Now the whistle goes for a foul throw, put his field foot, I think, in the field of play. Mason there to Dunford. And Australia bringing their goalkeeper into play. This is Calderan. Van Egmond. Peterson, Mike Peterson, Peterson to Davidson, the Australians looking to retain possession a little more now than initially. New Zealand with a free kick this time. So Ricky Herbert playing in the middle at the back. Long ball there, headed away by Wade. Here's Arnold. Scored two goals against the New Zealanders at Sydney. This time the free kick goes the other way. So the New Zealanders not suffering yet by comparison, Adrian. Oh, you haven't got a microphone yet. We're just still working on that. And Charlie Yankos with his free kick. Scored against the New Zealanders from the penalty spot in Sydney. Equalised in Israel with a tremendous free kick in the dying stages. Robbie onside, feeding Ricky Herbert. Running outside him is Michael Redenton. Getting it nicely through here to onside again. And the flag up for offside against 
Darren McLennan. Promising move by the New Zealanders. So New Zealand with the job of restoring their reputations. When they look back over the last year, they lost twice to Australia last season, each time very narrowly, and there's a certain element of luck about the Australian goals that won those two contests. And then this year, the New Zealanders uh, certainly had a disadvantage in that match, well-publicised reasons in Sydney. Now here's Davidson getting it into the penalty box, hit away by Malcolm Dunford. Over to Yankos. Hindside winning that one. Coming forward again, looking for it. Swept away by McLennan. Back now to Yankos. Outside him is Calderon. Now Graham Arnold. Looking for Paul Wade, finding him. Quino. Challenged by Mason. Paul Wade, just outside the penalty box, brought down there. Free kick against Noel Barclay. Just outside the box. So real pressure here on New Zealand. Oscar Crino. Dunford heading out. Cross to Peterson. New Zealand coming away. McLennan. Billy Wright with the first time in there, which is blocked. Holler and Shaw. Beaten by Wright. McLennan and Ironside linking together. Oh, and that's a bad foul by the Australian. The referee didn't like that one. Came in from Van Egmond. Very late challenge. Ricky Herbert with a free kick. New Zealand. Zampos heading clear. Here's Davidson. Davidson overrunning it. Billy White brought down. Billy Wright getting the knock there as he was brought down. Just let us have another look at that. Billy Wright tripped there by Scott Oller and Shaw, right on the halfway line. Herbert's free kick this time. Put within the penalty box. Hit away there by Steve Calderon. Oh, ambitious, but nevertheless on, I suppose. As Ironside came in there and let go. And so, nil all at this stage, and we've had about 12 minutes. And uh, good afternoon, Adrian Elric. Yeah, good afternoon, Alan. As usual, early nerves are playing a big part in this game, although New Zealand seems to have settled down quite well. Had a couple of promising moves there, but it looks as though the Australians are taking no prisoners. Yankos with a long goal kick into the breeze. Lund assisted out there by Mason. One by Ironside. And kicked away a little wildly into touch by Van Egmond. 
So a bit of pressure here, Adrian, by uh, New Zealand. They're playing with a lot more confidence than uh, many people would have expected, perhaps. Oh, I think so. They've got a lot of pride at stake here, and I think John Eads has got them motivated to uh, perform, and uh, they seem to be doing the job very well at the stage. Well, there's New Zealand into the penalty box. Yankos, the sweeper, getting it away. Not particularly well. That's Ricky Herbert with a chip. Looking to get on the end of it was Ironside. Pushing through there from midfield. Steve Calder in number five for Australia. Oh, they're using Peterson this time. Oh, the ball slipping there past Davidson. Billy Wright beats Davidson pointlessly. Nice work by Wright. Ambitious shot. Peterson's long ball, nicely headed in there by Arnold. Oller and Shaw looking outside in for Crino, the man who scored the first goal in the previous encounter. Oller and Shaw tussling there with Noel Barclay. Well, Australia has a corner kick. Now it's a throw. Otherwise, probably we might have seen Oliver and Shaw coming across. Instead, it's Peterson with a long throw, awkwardly, into the edge of the box. And Spink, Warren Spink, number seven, earns a corner there as he turned on it. Now we will see Scott Oliver and Shaw coming over. Kick, kick an in swinger with his left foot. Gosling concedes another one. Well, this time it'll be Crino to take the corner on the opposite side again with an in swinger. Dion getting it away there. Expensive a throw. Australia maintaining the pressure. Looking for the first goal in the game, which hasn't arrived yet. Peterson. Davidson. The fullback. And the award is a goal kick. Well, Adrian, how do you think it's gone? Well, I think New Zealand are playing with a lot more commitment than they did in the uh, first game against the Socceroos, and it's paying dividends. They're closing the players down, and they're putting them under pressure, and they're making the basic mistakes. And I think, uh, you know, Gosling in the back, he's got them all under control. I think Gosling clears halfway. Headed on by De Jong. Nearly through there, just blocked by Jankos. Here's Ironside. Nicely through there. Ball nicely laid out by Dunford. Turned back inside. Oh, a bit of confusion in the ranks there. A little bit of pressure by New Zealand. Noel Barclay in attendance, not able to capitalise. There's a good ball in from Noel Bartley here, and at least we've got a player on the end of it challenging, you see, and it's putting pressure on the Australians, who's just almost scored an own goal here, caught the keeper off balance. Well, they come back down to New Zealand's half. And a free kick has been awarded to Australia, just on the halfway line. Yankos. Got it, got it. 
a legal charge on uh, Gosling. Now Ricky Herbert. And a free kick as De Jong puts a little bit of pressure on the defence. Disputing that ball in the air. And New Zealand a chance here to pressure in the penalty box. Ricky Herbert again, taking all the free kicks. Malcolm Dunford, Adrian playing uh, up in midfield most of the time, getting back when he has to, but uh, pushing forward. Yeah. Ricky, Ricky Herbert, the one who's gone uh, back into the middle. That's right, yeah, I think Malcolm's doing a very good job there. He's uh, picking up Oscar, Oscar Crino in the midfield there and nullifying that attacking force from a, for Australia's point of view and uh, getting forward on attack when the opportunity presents itself. Slid away in a touch. In the previous game, Quino had a lot of space. Yes, too much space, Alan. He was given plenty of room to uh, play the ball through, and he gave the strikers a field day. Yes, Barclay. Herbert, caught in possession. Could have been embarrassing. Poor Wade, unable to capitalise. That's a long one from Gosling. Did on the end of it is De Jong. Australian struggling. And the foot was up there. Kicked in the side of the head. Now what's the referee going to give here? Good crowd here, here today. Comes Enjoying here. this uh, tremendously, I think. Yeah, there's pressure on the uh, fullback here as De Jong comes in to head the ball. He brings his foot up and catches him full in the face which is obviously dangerous play, and I would have thought it would be more than just an indirect free kick, well, Alan. can't understand an indirect free kick. A dangerous play like that. So Noel Barclay to take the indirect free kick inside the penalty box. It's a good ball. He's done it. Just as he did in Australia. With his head, he's got it into the back of the Australian net. And here it comes. It's a nice set move. Early runs from the players, leaving him free. Up he gets. Top right-hand corner. Excellent goal. Keeper had no chance. And boy, are those players happy. And boy, has that put some pressure on the Australians. Here it comes from another angle from behind the goal. It's a beautifully floated bowl. You'll see how high Dunford gets here. Pixie spot. No chance for the goalkeeper. Lovely goal. Meanwhile, the play has the Australians coming over halfway. A little flick inside by Warren Spink. And a little of the rhythm going out of the Australians' play at the moment. Don't forget getting a knock there. It's being attended to at present. And New Zealand with just 10 men on the field and just want to slow it down for a moment. comes the hero of the moment. Now Robbie onside to Billy Wright. And he's impeded. Another free kick. More pressure. Now Ricky Herbert's free kick. Once again in that box. A little bit of pushing there, and uh, this time the free kick goes against the New Zealanders. Fred de Jong, the culprit. 
it must be a good feeling in the middle amongst the all points at the moment, Adrian. Well, I think they've got a lot more confidence than they've been playing with recently, and that goal is just what they needed. They seem to be uh, putting a pressure on Australia a lot more this game, and it's paying dividends. The back four is very tentative. The goalkeeper doesn't want to come off his line, and hence we're getting opportunities. New Zealand with the slight breeze advantage. And here's McLennan showing his speed, getting through past Van Egmond. Ball and Alba, temporarily losing that. And now feigning an injury, I think. Pretty hard to see how he was hurt. Here it comes, this is McLennan, he's working really hard here. He's managed to get on to the end of it. Oliver comes out a little bit late, and you'll see it's a 50-50 challenge there, and McLennan got his foot in there. Yes, he got a little knock, he's all right, though. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Play on the ball. Oscar Toy. Oscar. Go Awkward bounce there for Crino. He's under pressure. Robbed of the ball by McLennan. Took the ball away, and this referee is starting to look a little fastidious. He's quick to penalise him. Wade's attempt to volley in, unsuccessful. And Barclay sent away by Ironside. No Barclay. Good ball. Safety first there by Calderon. Calderon had little option there but to concede a corner. Barclays uh, crossed probably not quite sufficiently aerial. The New Zealander was on the other side of Calderon, wasn't he? I think possibly if he'd uh, come to the near post, it would have made a different situation. But uh, the Australians are panicking, and uh, New Zealand's got to capitalise now. Another goal on this half to New Zealand. We'll put a cat amongst the pigeons. A desperate moment for the Australians. Oh, well won by Dunford. Right. Free kick New Zealand. And the referee did not like it. Charlie Yankis gets the card. Here it is. Dunford's made the break down the right there. And he, he actually played the player and not the ball. And I think the referee should have stamped his authority earlier because on two or three occasions... The New Zealand players have been taken out without the ball and he's let it go, but Jankos got caught that time. Well, the Australians are getting a little desperate. <laughs> that glance are just over the top from McLennan. 1-0 to the All Whites. Just remembering the situation overall. Australia and Israel, three points apiece. Australia with a better goal difference. But that'll only come into uh, account if the points are level at the end of the series. Israel, two games to go against New Zealand here next week and then against Australia and Australia. Herbert getting it away there. Oller and Shaw trying to turn it in. Well, there's no doubt about the fact that when we watch this game, we can see the Australians having to hurry their passes to a far greater extent than, than was the case at Sydney, Adrian. That's right, Alan. They, uh, New Zealand players are pressing them down there, and they, therefore they haven't got time to get their technique into it. And uh, that smooth rhythm that they had is all broken up now. Now, here's a chance for Arnold. Oh, he didn't go on the offside against the man on the far side, Oller and Shaw. Arnold had a chance to go on his own there, I felt, Adrian. Yes, definitely. The opportunity presented itself there. He was a one-on-one -on -one with a centre-back, but he didn't take the opportunity. I think this is coming back to the lack of confidence in their own ability just now. They seem to be at sixes and sevens. Charlie Ankus is uh, long ball too long. Yeah. 
Right beaten in the air. Now it's Crino looking for Alderon Shaw. Cut out by Redenton. Billy Wright over his own head and over the sideline. Oliver on short, doing his best to get round Redenton. Mickey Herbert, safety first. Alan Davidson, trying for Australia. It's Warren Spink. Creating a bit of space. Good ball from Spink. Call of keeper, keeper there from Gosling, and he has it. That's Mason. Herbert to Mason. Hancock's is volley. He's header there by Spink. Alan Davidson. Australians settling down a little more now. A bad pass intercepted by Ironside. Gets McLennan away. Redenton. De Jong. Back towards Ironside. And the flag up, I think, for offside against De Jong. Robbie Ironside's made a big difference, Adrian, in midfield. Yes, he's uh, really tied it up in there. He's, he's picking up all the loose balls. He's committing the players to make passes, and his distribution has been excellent. He's uh, found his man, and he's attacked at every opportunity. Now, Crino. Getting it again, Oscar Crino. Slipping it through here for Peterson. Peterson beaten by Billy Wright. Good work by Philly right there. Known for his striking ability, but uh, helping out magnificently in midfield and at the back as well on occasions. Australians not easy to beat in the air. Calderon, that's Dunford getting it to De Jong. Tommy Mason over kicking. There's the Australian bench and Frank Eric without the smile for which he's become famous. Understandably, he's got a few problems on his mind at the moment. He's an unhappy man. Uh, good work there by Paul Wade. That's Oliver and Shaw with him. Got a lethal left foot. Good ball from him. Gary Lund got that away. Waiting for it, Charlie Yankos. Now Calderan has found Davidson. Uh, this is Davidson, rather. Van Egmond. Back to Calderan. Mickey Herbert heading there to Robbie Ironside. He wins the throw. And the New Zealand bench here with uh, almost a look of disbelief about it. Gosling using what's like Bruiser is to get well over halfway. Dunford's yeah, yeah, header goes astray, met by Arnold. Here's Wade being pushed backwards. Yankos, the sweeper. Having to hasten there to get it to Calderon. Davidson on the wing, looking for Oliver and Short. Further up the touch. 
Come on, Davidson. Oscar Carino. Danger man. Michael Redenton. A surprise selection in the New Zealand side. Done a good job looking after Alden Shaw. Down to McLennan. On to De Jong. Flicked out towards McLennan again. Now Dunford's up front. With him is... Fred De Jong. Uh, Malcolm Dunford's certainly very mobile. He's getting up there into attack. Fred De Jong putting himself about the field. Certainly sharpened things up front. Crino falling all over it. Doing No, the Australians with a free kick there. As Kuno found himself brought down. Alan Davidson. Very experienced Australian defender. He was playing when you were playing, Adrian. That's correct, yeah. He's a very uh, solid player and he puts himself about. He loves to attack, but he's not getting that opportunity today. Now the Australians getting one or two passes together. Van Egmond finding Wade. Paul Wade. Now Peterson getting it to Crino. Crino to Wade. Clever little header there by Wade. Gosling's equal to it. Clint Gosling looking a lot more relaxed today than he was in the match. Sydney, Adrian. Yes, he is. He's really uh, commanded his penalty area and he's awake to everything today and he's very sharp off his line. Now here's Barclay. And uh, all New Zealand looking dangerous there for a moment. Robbie Ironside got the shot in. Tommy Mason being yeah. back there. Let's just have a look at this again. Yeah. There's a lovely ball through to Ironside. He beat his man well, got the half chance opportunity, but he's just stretching a little bit there to get the power onto it. It was well down by Jeff Olver, though. Ironside and Dunford have done a very good job coming through, supporting the strikers. Oh. Is it? The Australians making mistakes that would not have occurred at Sydney once they got a hit over there. Oh, I think the frustration's coming right through now, Alan. Nothing's really working for them, and uh, even the basic things are falling down. Redenton to McLennan. Ricky Herbert. Barclay to McLennan. McLennan not able to find a target. There's Mason getting it nicely to Barclay again. McLennan working overtime on the flank there. Take his man on, trying to get through, winning a throw. Putting a bit of pressure on the new man, Gary Van Egmond. Darren McLennan. Very fast, very positive. He's playing exceptionally well, Alan. He's got all the New Zealand players are. They've now got this confidence and ability to take on the players, whereas before they weren't doing anything at all. Now Mason's throw. Pulled inside by Barclay. And good work there in defence. Myra Denton, who now sets things going with a cross-field pass. Ricky Herbert finds the young. It has to be remembered, Adrian, that this Australian side has built a very good record recently against touring sides to Australia from some very strong nations. Oh, yes, they've just played a series against Malmo from Sweden and had uh, three good results against them. I think they beat them uh, two games out of uh, three and had a draw in the other game. So, uh, And Malmo is one of the top European sides, so they've got to be playing extremely well. 
So the All Whites at this stage leading one goal to nil. Doing very well. Yeah, he's onside. The ball squeezing it up to McLennan. Just losing touch with it there. Just allowed it to get away from him. Australia trying to get something going here. Paul Wade. A little flick on there. Went nowhere at all. Warren Spink has not shown up at all. He had a lot of space on the previous game on the right wing. This time he's had no time at all and he's shown none of his skills. Looking into the sunshine. Gosling achieves uh, quite a long distance with his clearance. And Mike Redenton to throw in on the right flank. The All Whites. And quite rightly, a free kick awarded against uh, Philly Wright. Well, the very subdued Australian looking bench, Adrian. Yeah, it is. I'd be worried as well. Here's Warren Spink. First to the ball. That's good work by him. Oh, he's turned it behind. Pressure makes people make mistakes like that. Yeah, I think so. Alan, I think, yeah, it is definitely. I think uh, they're getting very frustrated, frustrated out there. They just can't handle the situation, and nobody's really taking control of the Australian team and saying, hey, slow it down, push the ball to feet, let's make spaces and let's work for each other. Whereas New Zealand are really working for each other. They're trying to make good balls into ba uh, bad balls into good balls and working very hard. Good, good dispute in the air there by McLennan. Got a knock in the process. Yeah, Yankos has the ball. McLennan's still down in the centre circle. The play's gone on. The referee, McLennan's back on his feet. He's hobbling. It was his leg which is suffering. And here's De Jong shaking off that challenge. Fred De Jong, but McLennan's not able to get into the middle. Dunford's made a run up there. Oh, good bit of work there by Billy Wright. Threading his way in there nicely, Adrian. Yes, he did. Uh, Fred and Billy are working very good, well together, and their interpassing has been excellent because they're working hard for each other, and they're creating a lot of havoc down that right-hand side. Bit of a problem here for McLennan. Oh, it looks as though he's twisted his knee in that tackle in the middle there, and uh, that can be quite painful, but I'm sure just on half-time, he'll have uh, time to go in at half-time and get it sorted out, so he comes out fresh for the second half. So New Zealand ahead 1-0 and it's very obvious of course that uh, the next goal is uh, of vital importance. New Zealand can score again, the Australians have a mammoth task ahead of them. The question is can we? Oh, I think the, the opportunities are there, I think our players have been playing extremely well and they've been uh, getting on the end of everything that they can. And uh, I would say the Australians, have, I'd favour New Zealand to score before Australia at this stage, uh, the way they're going. And Darren McLennan hobbles back into the middle. They'll have about another five minutes to see out before the half-time break. And New Zealand have a throw right next on the right flank. Here's the quick throw to Billy Wright. And that one from Ricky Herbert. Turned away from the corner by Olver. Now the linesman is telling the referee that it's a goal kick. Yeah, well the replay's coming over now. Ricky Herbert gets behind the defence and delivers the ball beautifully to the far post. And it's going right over deep there. And then once again, the Australians are under pressure again, and uh, Oliver had no opportunity, no, uh, can only put it over for a goal kick. The linesman's been overruled. It is a corner. Barclay. Oh, 
Oh, a brave effort there to turn it in, but it's a goal kick. Is it Gary Lund? I'm not sure. It happened pretty quickly, but it was driven back by Barclay. Yes, it was Gary Lund that got on the end of it. That's a brave player that dives at the uh, feet of opposing players to try and get on the end of a ball. But once again, the Australians were under pressure. Here it is. It's driven across hard. And there's Gary Lund throwing himself at it. Unfortunately, he didn't get it on target, but it was a brave effort. Now the Australians trailing 1-0, Older and Short. Back here to Calderon. Between those, pass goes astray. McLennan to Ironside. Dunford working through very nicely. Referee says that's all right. Australia. Peterson. Crino. Yankos. Mason blocking Crino effectively. Nasty collision. Brave work there by Tommy Mason. It was actually. I don't think Crino realised that Tommy Mason was so close and he just turned uh, thinking he had uh, plenty of room and Tommy Mason was on to him and of course uh, there was a bang of heads and bodies and uh, it looks as though both of them are suffering a little bit. Now New Zealand, here's McLennan. Out to right. Back to Dunford. Can he get it back? He wins a corner. Malcolm Dunford is playing as well today as I've seen him play. Oh, he's got so much commitment and so much heart that he's, he's everywhere. He's overlapping, he's uh, attacking the goal, he's working in the midfield. Excellent, strong player in the midfield, and with Robert Ironside as his foil, you know, they've really got that midfield sewn up. Hence, we haven't seen Crino doing his magic. Tommy Mason with a corner. Headed clear and a free kick to come anyway, so that's the end of that New Zealand raid. But Tommy Mason hitting that uh, powerfully. The Australians looking for an equaliser before the half-time break. They haven't long. Strong run there by Van Egmond. And a free kick as Van Egmond was looking dangerous. He's been infringed against. Good run by Van Egmond. This might be just what Australia are looking for, the chance to level up. Half time coming up. Man over the ball is Oscar Crino. And with him is Charlie Yankos. Remember, Yankos scored from 25 uh, metres against Israel. Well, he'll be looking for a space around the corner of that wall. But bet your bottom dollar, Yankos will hit it. Might have been better after three o'clock when the Auckland and Barbarian sides are here. Over the bar. Charlie Yankos, a uh, very committed player. He's the backbone of the Australian side, without a doubt. Not always winning it in the air, but certainly disputing everything the New Zealanders. Oh, well won by Dunford. Gets it back from Ironside. Final shot, not quite so impressive. Malcolm Dunford. Optimistically trying his luck from about 35 metres. McLennan's after Yankos. He finds Peterson. Outside him is Van Egmond. There's Wade. Tommy Mason looking after him. He gives away a corner. Just lost control. Tommy Mason indicating he was pushed, but uh, the linesman not impressed. 
Oller and Shaw. Time running out in this first half for the Australians. Trailing 1-0. Here's Oller and Shaw. Marshalling just tipping it away there from Crino. On his own up there, De Jong. Oh, thank you, says De Jong. The whistle goes. And half time has arrived here at Mount Smart Stadium. And the crowd rise to the All Whites as they leave for the break, leading the Australians by one goal to nil. That goal once again to Malcolm Duncan. Well, how many times over the years have we seen the All-Whites going into a match against Australia at soccer as underdogs, and here they are leading at half-time. And with me now is former international New Zealand captain Steve Sumner. Marvellous first-half performance by the All-Whites, Steve. Yeah, certainly. It's been uh, a marked improvement on the, uh, the last performance in, in Sydney, and uh, I think a lot of a credit to the guys out there. They've performed ter terrifically well. It's been a thrilling performance from them at times. And I think that people like Robert Ironside have set the pattern for us there. Um, very early on, he was closing people down and doing a lot of backtracking and chasing about. You know, and I tended to think that work rate and commitment had become dirty words in our game, but it's good to see it out there. Absolutely thrilling. So the work rate and commitment is up, and some selection changes as well has been the key. Well, I mean, he's got Mal Dunford playing in the middle of the park, and on paper, you may have thought, well, that's a bit dodgy, but he's played terrific. Uh, Mal and Robert Ironside have done terrifically well. Darren McLennan up front has worked his heart out. It's going very well at the moment. They're closing down the Australians, so they're stopping them running into gaps. Well, they're closing them down. They, they could do better. I'd like to see them force themselves forward a bit more, but uh, it's not going too badly. Mm -hmm. Now, the Australian side, would you say that they, they, their coach would be disappointed with the way they're playing, or is it because of what the All-Whites are doing? Well, I think for the first 10 minutes, I thought that they were doing quite well and were allowed to play. And once Robert and the rest of the midfield guys, and Billy Wright as well, started pushing in and squeezing things up, it didn't give them the time. And we got them playing in their half quite a bit. And I would say that right now, they want to slow it down again, if they're allowed to. If they're not, then, you know, we're going to see uh, a fair second half from our guys. Well, what sort of approach should the All-Whites take now that they're 1-0 up? Well, pressure. Keep the pressure on them. Make them play in their half if they can. And, uh, I mean, obviously we dominate a lot of stuff in the air. I mean, I've never seen such a big old white side there, and they're doing very well. So anything that looks remotely like get, uh, a cross, get it in there and get the big men on the back post. They're causing heaps of trouble. Is there a temptation to come back and try and defend that one goal? Oh, there always is. But, I mean, you know, when you're thinking probably the last 10 minutes or something like that, and about at that stage the Australians will have to resort to other tactics if they don't change them now because uh, they're in a desperate situation. And uh, so maybe in the last 10 minutes you might see us sit back if we're still holding a 1-0 lead. So it's good news then as Adrian Elric's back with us now. Well, Adrian, you'd be just as thrilled as Steve Sumner with the performance of the All-Whites. Oh, yes, I think the, the total change in the team from the last performance is uh, out of this world. You know, the commitment's there, the players' hearts are in their game, their confidence is in there, everybody's running for everybody else, you know, and I think John Adshead's got them really performing. Well, this probably emphasises again what a hard job John Adshead has had to come back in and pick up the All-Whites after uh, Kevin Fallon had uh, withdrawn from the squad just shows you what a hard performance it must have been for him to take them through Israel and Australia, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. The conditions don't suit us overseas, although we performed well overseas before, but it's such short notice, lack of money, lack of preparation. Uh, it all comes back to the attitude that John's built into the players, giving them the heart and the courage to perform under adverse conditions. There's something about uh, New Zealand teams when Australia play them over here at soccer that the Aussies seem to panic a bit. They were doing that in the first half there. Yeah, well, I think that uh, comes back to John's uh, tactics again. He's brought uh, three or four of the Australian players into the side now, and you've got Ironside and uh, uh, De Jong up front there in the midfield there, and they're creating a lot of havoc. They know these players. They know which is their strengths and their weaknesses, and they're playing on them. They're closing players down. They're not giving them a chance to settle on the ball. You haven't seen Crino in the first half. The only time he's, you've seen him is when uh, he's been trying to chase Malcolm Dunford or Robert Ironside. He's now on the other end of the boot. 
One disappointing aspect of the Australians' play has been some of the late tackling that we've seen from them, and uh, feet high in the air. In fact, one of those incidents led to the goal. That's right. I think the referee's got a little bit to blame here. The first instance when I think it was Robert Ironside uh, overlapped on the right-hand side and he was taken out with a professional foul. If the referee had stamped his authority on there, booked the player, you wouldn't see any more of it. But unfortunately he didn't, and we've had four or five occasions now where the Australians uh, mainly have been uh, professional uh, fouls, late tackles, pulling the players down, and of course uh, the one that uh, really got his name taken off, um, Jankos at the back there, he was the unfortunate player, it was his turn. Well, if we have a look at the goal that New Zealand scored then, it came from uh, a foot high in the air against uh, Fred de Jong, and as we were saying, we've seen too many of those incidents from the Australians. Oh, we have. You know, the, the ball bounced onto the ground awkwardly for the fullback. He didn't realise Fred was coming in from the blind side. Fred got his head to it because it was head high, and the player just put his foot up. Hence, I thought it should have been a penalty, actually. Well taken, taken uh, set play then, and a uh, great header. Oh, it was excellent. Uh, we had the, the front runners dragging the players away and creating space, and Malcolm Dunford getting up beautifully. Picked his spot, powerful header, and the keeper had no chance whatsoever. You know, wonderful goal for New Zealand. Fulver has let one in, and there's Frank Arick. He's probably had plenty to say at the half-time break, trying to instill the confidence in his team that... We saw from them in the match in Sydney. And we just wait now the arrival of the All Whites and the referees. The Australians first back, Charlie Yankos, plays his football in Greece and is the man at the back who controls the tactics of the Australian side. And alongside him there was Oscar Crino, the midfield wizard who has played so well so often for Australia. Well, this match is only halfway through and the job is just halfway done Adrian Elric uh, by the New Zealanders but quite sure that they will have been uh, built up even further by John Adshead at the halftime break you've experienced plenty of that uh, sort of animation that John Adshead can bring to his talks oh yes Alan uh, he'll, be get, he'll be going there he'll be rejuing them up again and making sure that uh, they're performing at the same level as they were in the first half because they did work very, very hard in that first half. If I was the Australians, I would slow it right down, get back to the basics, start getting a bit of confidence in your side and uh, trying to get on the end of a shot. And here they come. And a vastly different reception than that which uh, greeted them when they came back at half-time in Sydney. Here they lead 1-0, and Sydney, of course, they were two behind at that stage and uh, facing a hiding. They're obviously affected by the arduous travel which they'd encountered getting back from Israel. 36-hour trip, they went here, there and everywhere. And, of course, there was also a little bit of uh, illness within the camp. And they were hardly fit physically to see it out. The question is, uh, in the second half, which is going to be vitally important with Australia coming forward, Adrian, can New Zealand uh, keep their legs going? for another 45 minutes. Oh, I think so. They're a big, strong uh, side out there. It's probably the biggest New Zealand side that I've seen on the park for a long, long time. They've got players like De Jong, who's only a youngster, Tommy Mason, and players like that. So they've got plenty of heart and plenty of physical reserves there. Well, we'll see how they go. Here's Redenton, a careless back pass. And a bit of pressure there on Herbert. And Redenton almost made a fatal mistake with his first touch of the ball in the second spell. Australia would be pleased to have seen that. Now here's Davidson and Crino. Gosling, who recently lost his place in uh, his club side in Australia, is be pleased to be leading his Australian contemporaries 1-0. There's Jankos at the back. Gary Lund with a high half volley. The Australians first timing it around. And Oliver and Short switching on to the opposite wing for a moment. Gets the throw. So Australia, a slight breeze at their backs. He's so easily coming up the field. Thank you very much, say the All Whites. 
Mike Peterson throws the ball behind. The sun has departed temporarily. We have a light cloud overlay. That's assisted up by Ironside. Davidson to Crino. Looking for Arnold and Shaw. Here's Arnold. Arnold! Oh, Arnold and Shaw missed it. Great save by Gosling. Arnold had a wonderful chance. Very much relieved home crowd. Here comes the read. This is beautiful. Arnold picked his spot there. A brilliant save by Gosling, but the poor finishing by Oller and Shaw. He, uh, he just threw his leg at it. This is the other angle. Here he is here. The beautiful slip pass from Oller and Shaw to Arnold. Good control. Lovely finish. Parried by Gosling. Good reaction. And, of course, uh, Oller and Shaw wrapped it over the bar. A let off for the All Whites in the second minute of the second half. Arnold should have scored. It was an excellent save. Oh, it was a good save from uh, Gosling. He spread himself wide and got a good hand onto a very solid defence there. But I think that's the way the Australians have been playing it on. They're frustrated and they have an opportunity like that and they don't take it. Well, Frank Eric won't be very happy with that. Still 1-0 to the All Whites. De Jong working out there. Mason trying to burst through. Mason down the touch line. Tommy Mason. Good ball. Still in. Billy Wright. Redenton off target. Oh, sustained pressure there by the All-Whites. Very near thing. Great run by Tommy Mason. Oh, it was an excellent run by him, Alan. Yes, he uh, came down the side. Beautiful quality ball in here. And once again, it was a brave player getting on the end of it. Just couldn't quite control it down, but uh, it was turned in again there. Unfortunately, he was lucky for uh, them that the Australian got a foot in there. But it, uh, the finishing there was a little bit uh, off target from Redenton. Ricky Herbert banging back to halfway. The Australians just have to go for it. Trailing 1-0. There's Billy Wright's long ball across to Fred de Jong. With him is Calderon. Jong trying to get round Calderon. And is penalised. Mason's right foot, not quite the equal of his left. Just wondering if the Australians have made a substitution there, Adrian. No, it's coming up, Alan. There is a uh, player warming up on the outside of the track there. Uh, so it looks as though they're making an early change. Now here's Arnold. Can he get the shot in? Can he? No, he can't. And with him was Spink. Spink, I think it was, who finally got his foot on it. That was excellent defensive play by the New Zealanders there. They kept forcing Arnold away from goal and not giving him a clear opportunity. Here it is here. The ball is played in there. Okay, what's the defender of the New Zealander? Holding him there, not giving him a clear chance, and finally the shot was sprayed wide. There, it was excellent work there. So Warren Spink off target, and Clint Gosling the goal kick. Five minutes gone in the second half. Like Malcolm Dunford's changed his jersey at half time. He's now wearing number five. Start of the match in the first half wearing number three. Come on, he's 
There's Dunford. Run away by Noel Barclay. Now the Australians are easing forward. He's onside. And good work there by McLennan. McLennan. I don't think the referee liked it any more than anybody else. Steve Calderon. A professional foul. This is McLennan, he's, he's through here, he's using his speed, he is so quick off the mark there, he's got the gap, and there it is, a professional foul, but what's annoying about it is the referee's taking no action over it, the player wasn't even booked. Well, the referee should, should take his glasses off, because that was very definitely a deliberate foul, and certainly warranted at least the yellow card. Here's Mason. Oh, Billy Wright with a ricochet, corner. There's Billy Wright, attempting the volley and hitting it well. It was quite a good move, Alan. It, uh, once again, the players, Dunford was the dummy run this time, and uh, they gave the opportunity to create a chance there, and uh, Billy Wright got the end of it. It's just as well as the Australian body in the way to deflect it. So here's Tommy Mason. Wright's on the end of that. Headed away by Oller and Shaw. Here's Gary Lund. Onside. Oh, just blocked by the Australians. Now they've got Crino in possession. Looking for Arnold. Ricky Herbert, the through ball, holding up in the breeze a little. Onside looking for it. Well screened away by Davidson. Good play there. Wade falling all over it. Onside dispossessing him. Holler and Shaw to Spink. And now Peterson. Using Calderon. Davidson. Nice run here by Wade. Ball way to Alan Davidson. Right on the line. And Wade and uh, Davidson wins that free kick against Billy Wright by exercising patience. He had nowhere to go, but he hoped for the best, and he certainly got it. He's very fortunate, Alan. Actually, he was uh, screening the ball well, but he wasn't playing the ball, so it should have been a free kick the other way, but uh, the referee didn't see it that way. Trino. Clint Gosling coming off his line very quickly to gather that. That's a no man's land, Yankos. Holler and Shaw. The Australians starting to string their passes together. Dunford nicely to Dion. Here's Billy Wright. Finding McLennan. Darren McLennan. Yankos getting it away nicely. Little first timer. Now the counter attack. Long run by Peterson. Now it's Quino. De Jong controlling it beautifully to McLennan. 
Not enough all whites in the middle yet. The final delivery, not quite. Billy Wright. Good ball. All the flags up. Somebody offside. Fred De Jong. Well, some scintillating football, exciting stuff there, Aiden. Yes, it was fast and furious there from one end to the other, but New Zealand are not letting this game go. They've uh, they've been under pressure for a little while there, but they're breaking back quickly, and McLennan especially has had two good runs there. It's just unfortunate we couldn't get it uh, finished off on both occasions. So De Jong blocking that ball from Peterson. Big solid midfielder, Steve, uh, rather Mike Peterson. And a ball from Dunford, and on the blind side now, comes Ironside. Strong run from Ironside, coming from nowhere to get there. Oh, Tommy Mason kept that in to New Zealand's disadvantage, perhaps. Now uh, Yankos, the Australians coming. Crino lurking on the left. Redenton outplayed here by Arnold, is he? Arnold. Wade back behind him to Calderon. Challenges coming, and that's one too many. And Noel Barclay is given the yellow card. His tackle was late. There it is here. He got away from one tackle there, and Noel Barclay just professional foul, much the same as Australians have been doing, but unfortunately we get booked for it and the Australians don't. You know, it's, uh, there's no justice in this game at times. Referee, Mr. Ben Singer, whose performance has been a little erratic up to this point. Puts his book away. Barkley has a yellow card. Australia have a free kick. Outside the penalty box, about 10 or 12 metres. Goal kick. Strong effort to uh, get on the end of that by Paul Wade. There's a definite chance there, Alan. It was floated to the far post and he was unopposed, but he just didn't get on the end of it, did he? No, he didn't time it well. Ironside winning that in the air. Ben Egmond in possession. Feeding Davidson. Australians working overtime. Little flick to nobody in particular. Thank you very much. Ricky Herbert returns it over halfway. Yankos. It's another free kick in a dangerous situation from New Zealand's point of view. As Yankos will come forward for this. It's directly out in front of the right upright. Crino seems to place the ball and Yankos seems to kick it. Yankos wants the wall moved. The referee's happy with it where it is. Look for the power shot again. This is where he scored from against the Israel side last week. Frank Eric 
Holds his head in despair. 1-0. Slowly but surely, the sands of time are filtering away. About 28 minutes remaining. Difficulty getting it to halfway that time. Gosling. Billy Wright heading it. Helped on its way by McLennan. Beyond disputing the ball and pulled off the ball, I thought, there. And now we've got coming on for Australia, Andrew Koska. And going off is Steve Calderon. Koska comes on. Defender coming on at a time when they 1 0 down. It'll be interesting to see just what role Koska adopts, whether they're going to push another man forward. Dunford. No, rather her, but it was getting it away. Now here's Peterson for Australia. Dangerous ball. Gosling's out. Looks as though he could well have caught it, Adrian. Yeah, but under pressure, it's safety first, so he's, uh, he's done the right foot. thing. Both first, got it well. This could be an interesting result, Alan. If it stays this way, then that'll open the uh, door mainly for uh, Israel to uh, possibly qualify for the next uh, section in the World Cup. Well, it'll, it'll all come down to the last match anyway, I think, because uh, no matter what happens, Australia have to play Israel. I suppose if Australia beat them, they, they can still win it on goal difference certainly be improved if they beat them uh, on the day anyway no matter what happens meanwhile but it'll be interesting certainly a lot more interest now in the match against Israel here next week now Australia pushing forward here's Oleron Shaw well blocked good cover there coming back Noel Barclay Dunford clears. No one downfield. Yankos. New Zealand is really getting committed to defence at the moment. De Jong charging Yankos down. Takes a bit of the pressure off New Zealand there. Powerful header by Gary Lund. And now McLennan. Nicely dispossessed, but getting it back after Billy Wright had stepped in. McLennan. Oh, an ironside, not quite able to get on the end of De Jong's little chip. Well, that was good old-fashioned hard play there. Darren McLennan fought his way through there. Got the ball to De Jong, little cross, and ironside was just a little unfortunate not to be able to get on the end of it. Good grafting. So New Zealand under a bit of pressure for a while, coming back very effectively. Maintaining their 1-0 lead. 20 minutes into the second spell. Australia making the one substitution already. Alan Davidson. This is the new ruling it's coming to affect the speed Through of the game. From the wrong place. Place. Through from the wrong place. Throws from the wrong place, so the throw goes the other way. That's right, it just speeds the game up a little bit and stops them wasting time. Dunford back to Redenton. Redenton pushed over from behind by Peterson. Ricky Herbert. Oh, 
we have it probably banking on McLennan's superior speed there, but McLennan didn't seem to read it. Oh, just a little lack of communication there. I think if it, uh, he'd waited for Darren to give him the nod before he gave Darren the nod, it might have been a better race. But we're still in the attacking third, so that's the main thing. Yeah, but throw to the near post. Now Warren Spink. Peterson coming forward, dispossessed very effectively indeed by Dunford. Real speed by Dunford showing there, getting back. Here's Koska, the new man. Spink. That's a very good play from New Zealand, Alan. They're uh, forcing the Australians to play back, so obviously they're closing down all the options. Now Van Egmond. Down to Wade, in steps Dunford, and Barclay. Herbert, offside up there against McLennan. Replacement for Australia coming off number eight, Mike Peterson. Can be replaced by number 15, Robbie Slater. So Robbie Slater to go on in place of Mike Peterson. Robbie Slater wearing number 15. Substitutes. That's two substitutions by the Australians. And that's all they can make. Here's Crino. Arnold looking for shooting space. Winning a corner, it's well kept at bay. They're giving Arnold very little space today. He had one opportunity, didn't take it, but that's all. That's all, Alan, yes. Uh, I think the, the back four of New Zealand's done an excellent job in controlling the play and which way the players face, and therefore they're cutting down the opportunities, and uh, they're doing it very, very well. Crino with his corner. Yeah, Goss makes a poor pass. We're getting to... Well, here's a chance for... Last for Billy Wright, it was. Billy Wright. The referee's quite happy with the crash. Billy Wright lies prone. Play goes on. Billy Wright still on the ground as Australia counter-attack. Redenton coming in. Okay. And that one's squeezing away, ricocheting across the touchline. Billy Wright still lies prone just outside the penalty box. I think it's uh, one of those professional fouls again from the Australians that they've got away with in the heat of the moment. Uh, the keeper seemed to come out feet first, which I think is a little bit illegal, really. Just a little bit. And as we said, this referee is erratic. Nobody minds a referee who is hard on fouls, providing he's consistent. But he has not been consistent during the course of this match. Yeah. Danny Halligan sitting on the bench there, talking to John Edsett. Whether he's bringing them on, I don't know. But at the moment, Billy White has made a recovery. Which is good news for New Zealand because his skills have been in evidence out there today. And here's Fred de Jong forcing his way down the touchline, making a lot of ground. Fred de Jong going brilliantly. Alan Davidson back to Jeff Olver. Hopeful. Drop kick. 
And there's Slater, gone into the attack. Robbie Slater. Spink, Warren Spink turning on it. Davidson. Holler and Shaw. Challenged effectively by Ironside. Ironside's done a marvellous job in midfield for New Zealand today. I think it was Eddie Johnson, his club coach at the Sydney Olympic, who said when John Edge had first named his side and didn't have Ironside there, he said New Zealand are a team to be feared because if they can pick a side without Robbie Ironside, they must be a marvellous side. That's right, yeah. We just had a substitute there. Uh, Noel Bartley's come off and Danny Halligan's come on. Now, he's a very strong midfield player. He'll run all day, so hopefully that should give us a bit more power in the engine room. He's an awkward ball. Gosling's equal to it. Yes, Danny Halligan had a, an injury, which we understood prevented him from uh, being considered for selection. He's obviously uh, fit enough to come on here at the stage. That's good from New Zealand's point of view. Fred De Jong working overtime in midfield. Ironside there, the referee getting in the road. Bounces to Australia's advantage. This is Crino. Gary Lund has to be careful not to give away a penalty. And a corner to the Australians. And a lot of noise above us at the moment. Well, some anxious faces there. Oh, that's the, uh, some interested faces there amongst the players in the three o'clock game here. The oval ball. Oh, Gosling. The near post. Returning it to Oller and Shaw. Ironside. With what we could describe as a touch finder. That's right, yeah. There's Gary Wetton in the picture there with his brother AJ, Brian Williams. These are all the players lined up for the festival rugby match after this. I don't know who's playing for who, but I think they're the Auckland Barbarians. Well, I think they're feeling the slight twinge of anxiety that all the New Zealand public here are the moment. One nil ahead. Can New Zealand hold on against this powerful side? And here we have a corner coming. Ricky Herbert flicking that away. Pressure from Australia. They need one goal to level up. One nil to New Zealand. Holland Shaw's corner. And that's gone beyond the goal. Another goal kick. And the Australian heads sink a little lower. Actually, I think they've let themselves down in their performance here today, Alan. They're uh, not as crisp and as sharp as they should be. Their distribution's poor. And their attitude, they don't seem to really want to work that hard, do they? And I would say Frank Orff would be uh, not a very happy person at the present time. Certainly didn't appear to be there when we saw him a moment ago. Here's the ball up to halfway. The other part of the story, of course, apart from the Australians letting themselves down, is the old story in sport, you can only play as well as you're allowed by your opponents. And today, they haven't had the latitude they had in Sydney. Hancos. Calder and going forward. Getting it to Van Egmont. Halligan winning it, losing it. Ironside confidently going through there. Davidson on the end of this pass. Nice work, Davidson. And Dunford for New Zealand. On Koska. Oscar Crino. 
with a critical, critical free kick. Oh, well done, Gosling. Once again, he's really dominated that area, hasn't he? He's, uh, he came out with so much confidence here, and he just plucked the ball off the players' heads. That must give a lot of heart to the New Zealand players. The Australians trying to get things going there. Billy Wright handled that, I think. I thought the whistle had gone. No. Bobby Slater. In the corner awarded as Mason challenges Slater. There's been a lot more pressure on New Zealand in the second half. Scott Uller and Shaw. Referee awards a goal kick. It's a very good decision, Alan. Actually, it came off the uh, Australian player, but the linesman gave a corner, but the referee overruled him, which is an excellent decision. Now, I think with this, if this result stays this way, it's going to make it very interesting for uh, how Israel play next week here. Uh, if New Zealand could happen to pull off a win against Israel, it would change everything, wouldn't it? Well, we'll wait quarter of an hour before we worry about that. <laughs> right. I think, Adrian... I'm being positive, Alan. Yeah. Yes. Well, last week in Israel, Is Israel led Australia 1-0. A goal from the penalty spot until late in the game, Charlie Yankus ripped one into the back of the net from a 25-yard free kick. Make it one all. So we still some, have some 12 or 13 minutes to go here. Here's Koska. Trying his luck, which was out. Well, it must be satisfying to the New Zealand players to know that Frank Eric is so desperate that he's taken two of his uh, first choice team players off and replaced them with substitutes, indicating that things are not going well for his team and he's got to do something to try to revive their fortunes. It hasn't worked that way yet. Here's Halligan. Oh, he got one out a bit luckily. Now yeah, the Australians coming, but good challenge there by Ironside again. Bobby Slater. Davidson selling a nice dummy to Halligan. Finding Crino. Paul Wade with a chance. Oh, onside again. And away goes Billy Wright. McLennan took the player away and he hit that marvellous right footer. Looped it over Oliver's hands and he had nothing to do. Here it is from another angle. He's had a look up there. He sees he's got no support. He cuts inside there, beautifully balanced. There's the shot coming in over. Little chip and Oliver had no chance. Oliver was completely stranded there. Marvellous goal. A world-class goal by Billy Wright. He jumped the fence. It's a wonder he didn't jump the grandstand. Uh, and it was all made because of that tackle from Ironside. He went from one side of the field to the other and actually 
Got a beautiful tackle in there, which made it all worthwhile. What's she giving here? Goal kick. Here's Robbie onside, very red in the face, but uh, very satisfied within himself, I'm sure. I know he was very disappointed when uh, he wasn't chosen for the games uh, against China Taipei. Well, he he made himself available and told John Ed said he was happy to play, but John didn't want him then. But uh, things have changed since then, and John Ed said he'll probably be putting his name down first the next time he lines the side out. Levy's come on, and uh, McLennan has gone off. Tony Levy has come on. Late in the game, we've got about eight minutes to go. New Zealand ahead 2-0. Well, another one would be very satisfying to the New Zealanders and would, in fact, arithmetically, put them in with uh, a, a very faint outside show if they beat Israel handsomely. 2-0. If they can make it 3-0. And Australia have to come forward. Here's Levy. He's doing a little too much, perhaps. Herbert says goodbye, ball. Here's Graham Arnold. We haven't seen much of him. Can he tear one off? Trino. Slater. Flags up offside. Spink offside. Well, if nothing else happens, that Australian journalist who a week or so ago wrote that it's time that Australia bothered to stop playing, bothered, uh, it, it's time that uh, Australia stopped bothering to play against the All Whites because of the uh, substandard nature of our football and should be playing a decent pl football in countries, uh, might be made to eat his words today. I think so, Alan. I think it's true. If you didn't know who was playing here, you'd probably think the All Whites were the Australian side and vice versa, but... Uh, the All Whites have played extremely well. They've been very uh, controlled in everything they've done. Very purposeful. And very important now that they maintain two-goal advantage. They don't want to have to undergo some of the tension that you fellas had to undergo during the World Cup in 1981, particularly in Singapore. He's just one goal ahead and having to hang on, hang on. And did it so brilliantly, but boy, how nerve-wracking it can be. Oh, they've got a nice cushion there, and they, they seem to be taking it well on their stride. They're still tackling, they're still running, they're still working hard, and they're still closing the Australians down, which is making Australia really frustrated. They don't know which way to go. Well, there's about five minutes to go. New Zealand have got to keep their heads now. Here's Dunford losing the ball. Ricky Herbert also losing it in a different manner. See, the goal difference here is of critical importance to Australia, too, when they're battling with Israel at the moment. If New Zealand uh, take two points from this match, and if they happen to beat Israel next week and take another two, four points, that'll be, uh, that's more than Australia have at the moment. That's right, Alan, and uh, the other thing too is that it puts, under, uh, puts a lot of pressure back on Australia now because they have to beat Israel. They can't afford the luxury of a draw anymore. And I think the, uh, the hinging result is obviously next week when New Zealand plays Israel. Well, New Zealand still have to win this, but they're 2-0 ahead. Malcolm Dunford in the first half and Billy Wright in the second half. Two magnificent goals. Here's Slater. Beaten by Redenton. You have to say that Redenton's done a good job coming in. He had a lot to prove. He's done very well. Uh, he's only a youngster too, Alan. It's probably his first full international at this level, and he's coped with it very well. He hasn't been spectacular, but he's been there. He's done his job, and he's part of the team. You know, this is the main thing. Now, here's Warren Spink. 
Billy Watt. Oh, it was a bad challenge there after the ball had gone there. Very professional foul and very late. And has the referee seen it? What's he getting here? Well, he didn't actually see it, he just saw the after effects of it. He wants the player concerned. What does he want, Yankos? He's talking to Yankos. And we'll just wait for the outcome of this. A heat discussion going on here. Is that Robbie Slater? No, it's Paul Wade. And what did he get out of it? Just a lecture? Yeah, once again, the Australian just a players lecture came off with it. And New Zealand had a yellow card. Professional foul, and he's had a quiet chat. As I said, he's been erratic. He's done some things very well, he has. very perceptively. And on other occasions, he's, some of his rulings have been very difficult to understand. It's a little bit of respite for the players here now with his break for the injury, and uh, it's given them a bit of a breather. And New Zealand have a free kick. It's not a very happy sight there, Alan, with all the Australian players on the bench there. They don't look uh, as though they'll be partying tonight. Well, you can't blame them, can you? They came over here, I'm sure, thinking, wondering how many goals they'd add to that 4-1 they got to Sydney. Yeah, it just goes to show you're only as good as your last game, and uh, put, this game seems to be in New Zealand's hands. See, right at this moment, we're looking at uh, the teams getting two points each from their two matches, and Australia having four goals against three. That's the way it stands That's at the moment. Right. So nothing much in it. Now here come the Australians in the last ditch effort. Warren Spink. Trino. Forward comes Jankos. Bobby Slater. Or was it Paul Wade? That's gone nowhere. Yeah, once again, all the attacking build-up has gone to waste because the last ball is so poor in the quality that it's not getting anywhere near the players. Well, the crowd support here today for the All Whites has been admirable. Aucklanders have turned out in force to show that they're at the backs of the All Whites, and the All Whites have responded magnificently. Forward come the Australians. There's Arnold looking for it. Well done by Gary Lund. He's been very good in the air. Now Fred de Jong. Nowhere to go much. Yankos. A long, hopeful delivery. He's Oliver and Short. Beating Redenton. Oliver and Shaw. And Gary Lund. Nice play there by De Jong and Halligan. De Jong just screening it. Herbert. Levy and Halligan. Time is ticking on. In fact, it's 45 minutes since the game started practically in the second half. And offside. So the Australians are just about, I think, into additional time if there is any uh, and they're still very frustrated alan that's that's a prime example of it they they're now hoping on the long ball and trying to get somebody on the end of it and it's just look not at frank working. eric yes all his birthdays have certainly not come at once today well you can see the dream of uh, going to the world cup uh, dashed in front of him by little old new zealand again little old new zealand eh? This is absolutely ridiculous. The referee has now booked Clint Gosling for wasting time when he was requiring uh, the Australian player to be 10, 10 metres away from the ball. He gives it, doesn't get, do anything for a professional foul, but gives something like that. He has been so inconsistent, it's not funny, isn't it? Well, I've already said what I think about him. And I certainly haven't changed my opinion. He's just wanting people to know that he's there, but his rulings are inconsistent. I don't know how many times I've used that word, but I certainly stand by it. Yes, mate, you 
2-0 New Zealand. Time just about up. Tommy Mason blocks effectively. Billy Wright's on the end of it. Here's Tony Levy. Up to his colleague, Mason. Not one of the better crosses from Mason. The New Zealanders have uh, not all played in places uh, for which they're known to occupy uh, today. Billy Wright has been all over the place, so is De Jong, but that's modern soccer, isn't it, Odin? You have to do a job away from your specialist position. It is, and I think uh, they've done it really well here because we've had a couple of uh, defenders playing in midfield like Robert Ironside and uh, Dunford. They've done an extremely good job there. You've got a, a striker, Billy Wright, an out-and-out -out striker working upfield, and he's been playing in the midfield as well. And uh, they've done the job that's been asked of them. You know, they've played the game hard and played it well. There's a lovely ball from Mason, getting it in behind them. Uh, not quite so lovely, but well meant. Getting it behind the defence. The theory now is to get them going backwards. He certainly had a couple of minutes into injury time. And there's the final whistle. And the All-Whites have done it. And they've done it on merit. They've outplayed the Socceroos. And they've scored two quite magnificent goals. The big crowd here at Mount Smart Stadium are loving it. And so I imagine are the All-Whites and John Edsett. And Dave Tyler, his assistant. Well done, New Zealand. New Zealand 2, Australia 0. And New Zealand, I suppose, Adrian Elric, in there with a remote chance if they could win by a wide margin next week. Oh, that's right. And uh, fully deserved win for the players. They've run themselves into the ground. Well, a marvellous performance by the All-Whites and the man in the hot seat, not just today, but for the last month. John Edsett, a marvellous effort. Yes, I'm uh, delighted for them. They had a lot to prove today. There's never going to be a football inside from our point of view, but we went out there and asked them to battle and asked them to work. They were wearing a New Zealand shirt and, well, uh, you know, you couldn't have asked for any more. Were you confident going into this match after what's been happening this week? Not, not unbelievably so. I mean, it's a very experimental side, playing Dunford in the midfield, but, I mean, he had to come out man of the match. I mean, the lad was just absolutely brilliant in there. He took a lot of chances today, it came off, and that's what football's about. Some, some decisions you make, you lose, some you win. One of the big things that your 82 side had was team spirit. It must take a while to build that up, and this, se this side seems to be getting it now. It's been difficult, but um, I think maybe the media helped us. They all put us down, and, um, you know, when a Kiwi, when you're telling a Kiwi he's down, that's the biggest mistake you can ever make. On to Israel now a bit easier for you well I mean it's goals again I mean we're in with half a shout again now we've put the pressure right back on and uh, Israel we're here.